Hey guys, it's Jessica again. So today we're going to talk about skin integrity and wound care. Now some people with wound care, when they hear it, they get all excited like it's Christmas and they can't wait to go see a cool gross wound. For me, I see a fake wound in lab or I see a real wound in life and I get sweaty and cold and clammy and I start to feel like I'm going to pass out. It grosses me out. So just know there's some people that love wounds and there's people like me that can't stand them and feel a little ill. Just depends on what your comfort level is, but you still need to know what to do with your patient to prevent wounds, what to do if you have a wound, and um, just general overall skin integrity. So in aging skin, um, as we get older, everything decreases pretty much. The thickness is decreased, so their skin gets more thin elastic. Their sweat glands will decrease, so they won't sweat as much. Um, that's one of the things too with a lot of like heart attacks or high, high, um, high hyperglycemia, things like that where uh, you would see sweating as one of the signs. With the elderly, they don't sweat. So you probably won't see that sign to clue you into that. So what might be going on? Um, they have decreased sensation, so they can't feel as much and they have decreased immune responses. Um, their skin can easily be torn and they're at increased risk for pressure ulcers. So a lot of times there's slower wound healing. It can be related to medical conditions, reduced nutrition, and things like that. So there's uh, several types of skin injury. One of them is a sheer skin injury. That's where the skin moves in the opposite direction of your bone and muscle. So we've got your patient sitting in bed and you go to move them up in bed and their skin gets rubbed against the sheets, that could be a sheer skin injury. It's where it's like it's a tear or something like that. Um, the head of the bed should be at 30 degrees to prevent them from getting slit all over in the bed. And what happens in a friction injury is that heat or moisture can break down under the skin and can cause bl blister. So it's any of that. Um, for friction injury, it's Think, I think friction like fire, like a fire will give you blisters. So with a friction injury, it's heat and moisture that breaks down under the skin and can cause blisters. Um, again, factors that affect skin integrity, poor nutrition. So if there's weight loss of someone who's very tiny frame, um, that can lead to pressure ulcers. If there's muscle atrophy, so say someone who's um, wheelchair bound, their muscles aren't as strong, they aren't atrophy. With poor nutrition, that can affect it, edema, and obesity. Um, if they have excessive body heat, it will slow tissue repair and um, increase your metabolic rate and the cell's demand for oxygen. Now, for all you smokers out there, you're probably going to hear a million times with every lecture, stop smoking, it's so bad. Um, it is true that smoking can't affect your skin integrity. It will reduce the amount of hemoglobin in your blood. Um, it decreases the amount of oxygen that's getting to your tissues. It causes your platelets to stick together, and so that can lead to um, that can lead to actually even like a heart attack. But if your platelets are sticking together, you're going to get more clots. You're at risk for DVT, pulmonary embolus, things like that. And also smoking will vasoconstrict, so it shrinks a lot of those vessels. So if you think that you have clots building up and everything's shrinking, it can really cause some serious complications. Um, with medications and skin integrity, steroids can affect them. Um, and also increase in like MRSA, things like that. Increase in infections can lead to impaired skin integrity. Um, let's see. Oh, one thing with diabetes, if you have a patient that's diabetic, um, you really want to be watching skin integrity because they're going to have decreased sensation. They're probably going to have neuropathy where they ha don't have feeling in their toes, their feet, their extremities. You're going to be teaching them to use a mirror and look at the bottom of their feet because sometimes they have no sensation. They could have stepped on a giant nail and have no idea that it's sticking in their foot. They have risk for um, fungus infections, yeast infections. They have decreased perfusion, and actually a lot of times they can have decreased circulation to where they're losing limbs and they don't realize it because they don't feel it. So that's huge. If you have a diabetic, you need to be uh, doing good observation on their skin integrity, finding out what they can feel, what their um, knowledge is, and teach them about it. Um, and then, you know, urinary incontinence, things like that. So here's a little saying that I do. I think you have maceration and excoriation. Maceration is from pro prolonged moisture. So I think M and M, maceration, moisture, maceration, moisture. Um, say they have 
uh, urea, digestive enzymes. It's coming, it has an exit, like urea, your urine. Your urine is pretty acidic. It's coming out. It can excor it cause excoriation. So I think an exit, excoriation, moisture, maceration. That's something you probably will need to know for your test because I know for us, they covered it for us. Um, and then if there's mental status changes, someone who's not quite all there or they're confused, they may not realize that they have pressure points or pressure ulcers. They need you to go in there and make sure that they're turning frequently, their skin is dry, they don't have any um, reddened areas. It's really important, especially like with dementia, things like that, that you stay on top of that for your patient because they're not able to realize it themselves. Um, so there's different time, um, say a patient has a wound, there's different kind of stress that can cause problems. Like say it's an abdominal wound, they've had a C-section or something. Um, any kind of like vomiting, coughing, laughing, distension on that wound, that can cause that wound to possibly burst. So you want to watch for the wound. Um, they have things called an intentional wound. That's where it's there's intent to make that wound. So it's a surgical wound like for a C-section or something like a tube or a drain. An unintentional wound would be skin ulcer, pressure ulcer, a traumatic wound like, I don't know, a bone came out of their skin and they got this huge hole in their skin now. Or like a diabetic foot ulcer. And we're going to talk about ulcers in another video. So that's basically what I wanted to go over in this video. I hope it helps.